Well, hello, hello, guys. And I'm drawing with two people. Igloo 23. Okay, I'm just. Okay, I'm here with Itigo 23 today. Now, I like to point out something. This collection is absolutely massive. So, anyways, guys, I'm gonna let you leave in the chat how many smoke alarms. Well, this video is gonna be a premiere. Leave in the chat, those of you that are watching, how many smoke alarms do you think I have? Go on, guess. The guessing ends in five, four, three, two, eighty-six, one, zero. The answer was ninety-eight. Yes, I have this whole thing right here. Let me go into wide angle. That is 98 smoke alarms in one room. I only have 27. So anyways, there's no way I'm going to be able to go across all this to film all this like individually like this anymore. So I have this tripod here for a reason. Alright, so before I begin, I'm going to have chapters for every single individual smoke alarm I have in my entire collection. So it's going to be a very long list then. The first alarm out of 98 is the Canton Seal PEIC. This is a photoelectric combination alarm. It has a front load battery, which I'm not going to mess around with or else it's going to die on me. Um, it's got a voice feature. It takes it has, it has takes 9 volts and it's hardwired, as you can see. Now we'll go ahead and test it. That's how it tests. Again, 9 volts. Dying sound. Alright, so that's the Cancel PIC. The next alarm we got is the. This is an older one, a little okay, older where one. Are we now? The Kitta Can COSM B. This one also has voice. And this is also combination. But the really. The real big difference between the Cancel PIC and the. Can so some B is that's ionization and it takes some um, uh, three nine volt uh, excuse me double uh, A batteries and it's not hardwired. I do have the hardwired version of this and I'll be getting to that in a few moments. So we'll go ahead and test it. So that's the Cancio SMB. Nothing really too exciting here. All right. So the next one is the, the the next one is the Cancio SM XTR dash B. This is the intelligent version of this. So called intelligent. Yeah. Nobody knows why. It's basically the same exact thing. But the cool thing about it is that it says Nighthawk instead of Kitta. And this one also, it's higher pitched and it has a um. Lower pitched voice. Test it. Test it. Fire. Fire. Takes a second. Warning. Carbon Five monoxide. Seconds. It is going to chirp at the end, but I'm not going to worry about that. But the test is basically finished. There it is. So nothing really different about this one. Just um, different voice um, and the different logo as well. But other than that, it's basically the same. And the next one, I'm not actually going to test this next one because it's basically the same as the XTR-B or test the same way. But I am going to explain this one. The next one is the Sim IB. It's basically the same as the regular B, except it's hardwired and takes 9-volt battery. 
but it does take it does test the same way as the XTRB, so I'm not going to test it. So next one we got is the newer version of the Canso SMB, the Canso SMBA. It's I have the hardwired version of it. Yeah, it's the Canso SM IBA, but I don't have it. It's yeah, got it's front load double A's, um, voice piezo. As you can tell, it's battery operated. Nothing really too fancy. It's ionization, so. Test it, maybe. There we go. Well, there we go. That is the Kansas some BA, aka Sheep. And the next one is very similar to the Kansas some XTRB and very similar to Kansas some BA. It looks exactly the same. It's ba it performs the exact same. It takes nine volts. Uh, excuse me, double A's. I keep messing that up. It takes double A's, voice, piezo, one single button. But it's intelligent. For so-called intelligent, I don't know what, but so -called. we'll never know. It, the model is Kansas some XTRBA. Um, this one is actually broken. <laughs> so-called intelligent. It is broken for some reason. It just won't test. But it basically tests the exact same way as the Kansas some BA. All right. So the next alarm, or in this case, the next three alarms. These are wireless interconnect alarms. They are the Kida um, P4010, we just call them the P4010 series. Um, this one right here is the P4010L DCS-W. This one is the DCS-W. It's a, these two are smoke only, except this one doesn't have an escape light, this one does. And this is the combination smoke and CO version. P4010 DCS-CO-W. So these are all um, battery only wireless. So go ahead and test these. These are really cool too. Testing. This is very loud. Press now to we, cancel test. Yeah, we know this it's is loud. very loud. Five, four, three, eighty-six, ninety-two, forty thousand. Fire. Fire. Test complete. Yeah, these are very cool. These are very high-tech kit of units, if you ask me. They are all photoelectric, and they all perform nicely. So the next one is another P4010, and it is the strobe light version. I didn't include them. I didn't include this one with the others because this one's not wireless, but it does. It strobe is. Strobe will only work on AC power. Yeah, and we're gonna demonstrate that. Um, I'll be getting the clip now. Fire. The next one is this is um, smoke alarm number eleven. The Kida I one twenty ten SCO. So this one is ionization. It has a ten year built in battery, and it also has a voice feature. And we'll go ahead and test it. I like to point out something that this one is very, very similar to this. It tests the same way. It's just basically a 10 year version of it. So now we're going to move on to, in my opinion, kind of crappy smoke alarms. And it is the kid of, this is garbage, P3010L. This thing falls on me like five times. I do not recommend these. They're actually pretty darn bad if you ask me. They don't work well at all. 
At least the P40s were um, a very big improvement to these. They were like the early versions of the P40s, basically. Yeah, we have the P3010K Steel in our house. It hasn't fallen yet. Yet. Yeah. And so, the six months have been installed. Yet. So, we're going to go ahead and test this one. Why the hell did it not gargle? <laughs> so yeah, that is the Kida P3010L. Um, it's photoelectric, of course. It's a smoke-only, 10-year built-in battery. That's what's awful about these units. These things can false very easily. Same with the P12040. And as you can tell, look at this. I did something to it. And look at this, there's no switch to like turn off on like the P4010, which there is, and that would be really convenient to be honest. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's a P3010L. Very, very crappy unit. Speaking of crappy, here's a little bit of improvement from the P3010L. The kit of P3010H. This is basically the P3010L, but with a escape, which lights up yellow, but unfortunately... This one actually broke. It doesn't work anymore. It's just dead. So it's just basically a paperweight. It's basic. It's basically dead. It's it doesn't work anymore. So it's basically a dead weight. And to finish off crappy, to finish off crappy lane, get a P thirty ten KCO. Nothing different. Just a combination version of the P thirty ten L. I'm not going to spend too much time with this one. Warning, carbon monoxide. And yes, it does chirp at the end of the test. So, what's next? The next one is a wireless alarm. The Kita RFSM ACDC, it's a bridge unit. I don't have the um, battery only model, unfortunately, so I can't get a chance to enter what the interconnection looks like, but you can always search up videos. There are videos online of what this, these units look like when they're interconnected. But this is an ACDC bridge model. It's hardwired and it has a, takes a nine volt battery and it's wireless. Ionization, and we'll go ahead and test it. Eh, it's just low battery. I don't have good batteries. It's loud too. Yeah, that's it. That's all it does. So that is the RFSM ACDC. All right. So these next three alarms are. Two of these Kida Can Dash BRF and the Home Hero HH COSM BRF. They these three are very, very, very similar. This one's just basically a rebrand and it has a different voice, which you'll hear when I test. You already heard it. Oh, it's not filming. Okay, so we're gonna go from this one all the way to the left. Now these all wirelessly interconnect, and they all look like fans. They are all ionization. They all have voice. This one's basic. This one's just a rebrand. So, here we go. Fire. Fire. Exit now. Fire. Incendio. Salga ahora. Fire. Warning. Carbon, Carbon monoxide, monoxide Fire. detected. Move to fresh air. Warning. Carbon monoxide. Warning. Carbon monoxide. Muevase al sitio con aire fresco. Test complete. Warning. Test again Carbon next monoxide. week. Prueba completa. Pruebe nuevamente la próxima semana. Yep, they all wireless interconnect, which I find really neat. And there they're all done. This one's a rare one, too. This one in the middle, the Home Hero variant, it's a very rare one. 
These two are as common as they seem, but they are rare as well. So, ah, great. Now we're gonna go back to, no, this time we're gonna go to Omega Crappy Lane. I do not like these units at all. The Kidda I4618AC. Ionization and a load of garbage. And I can show you what sucks even more. I wonder what. Oh, they're in stock. Nobody likes that except for except for non smoke alarm enthusiasts. Every smoke alarm enthusiast hate this, hates this unit, I think. Yep, I really don't know what else to explain. It takes 9 volt, man's terrible testing. Like, look it's at this. Boring as hell. It's now in hush mode. You have to press it again to take it out of hush mode. Sometimes it doesn't even work. What kind of mega bolt BS is this? I'm not gonna go. To, I'm not gonna continue with that one. All right. So the next one, which is something that, that I know for a matter of fact, Didigo has the Kida slash Fire X I one twenty eighty. No, we're not on crappy lane anymore. These are actually pretty good units, if you ask me. So this alarm is ionization. It has an escape light feature, which we'll demonstrate. This Soka three. I don't remember it doing that. And it tests the same way as the Fire X, you know, what, I4618 AC. And it you don't takes... need to explain it. I don't need to. It takes two 9-volt batteries. One for the PA zone, one for the light. And it's hardwired. It's really I12080A, but a lot of people just like to say I12080, but... You know, you basically understand the point. So, yeah. Get an I12080. Alright, you ready for... You ready to go back to crappy lane? No, I'm ready for my own 918 to accept batteries. <laughs> well, we're going down to crappy lane first, because next up we have the Kita I9010. It's to ten year it's a ten year ionization smoke alarm. And it's really the it's but what's interesting about it is that it's the only auto test I know of that has two buttons. See, this one's hush, which makes it chirp for some reason. And then this one tests it. Next, next, we're also, we're still on crappy lane. Or actually, this is not, I think this would be as crappy as the I-9010, but according to Tubby's alarms, it is, a matter of fact, in crappy lane. And that is the I-1040. It's basically a micro-profile version of the I-9010. It tests the exact same way. It sounds the it sounds very same, very similar. And it's making funny noises. And if you had the world's smallest mounting bracket for the P thirty tens, this could this will very well go on that mounting base. So here's that. And yet we're still on crappy lane. Next one we got are not one, but two Kita I-9040s. This one is the I-9040E because it's a bigger base. They both test exact same. This one's the one that has the batteries, so we'll go ahead and test it. And it's, well, as you can tell, my batteries are off. Test it. Eh. It's back to regular code three. It used to go very, fa it used to go very fast. Oh yeah. I-9040, cheap ionization smoke alarm. Don't recommend them. It is the, the next one we got is the Kita P-9040. It's the photoelectric version of the I-9040. It looks like a very weird, it looks like a very weird version of the I-9010. And it's um, another micro profile one. Test it. Here we go. It's a photoelectric version. It is rare, but not exciting. The next one we got is the Kita P9050. It's the newer, I'm assuming it's the newer, I don't know. It's just um, the next one up from the P9040. P9050, it rattles a lot. The covers aren't even attached properly for some reason. 
And it looks very similar to an I-1240 or P-1240 and stuff like that, except it doesn't have a second but It doesn't have, like, a it's second... Almost ex it's exa it looks exactly like the I-9050. They're both... Yeah, those two are exactly the same. Same with the I-9030, except they're both just different sensors and different bases. So, go ahead and test it. There we go. Nothing really exciting. The next one we got is actually kind of exciting, to be honest. Well, it's not too exciting, but it is cool. It is the Cancel B P I C. Excuse me, Cancel P I C, not Cancel P E I C. Cancel P I C. This one's the peak level button, and go and test it. And yep, it's telling me it's a low battery. There we go. Give it a second. It takes a very, very long time to do its first round. Insert SpongeBob title card here. There we go. 196. Low battery. Yeah, at least it knows. And there we go. It's basically done now. So, there we go. That's the Cancel B P. I keep on messing it up. Cancel P I C. Carbon oxide only hardwired alarm. The ne this next one was the very first smoke alarm I ever had in my entire collection. It is the Kita PI nine thousand. It is a dual sensor ionization slash photoelectric alarm. It's got a piezo. Obviously, it's got hush test. Go and test it. That's very interesting too, it just like does wherever it was left off. It's pretty quiet too if you have tape on it. It's labeled as the Nighthawk, again, little battery, PI9000. This next one is a very rare one. The Kida, and before you even say anything, it'll go True Sense 2050DS10. Now, before you even say anything, those of you watching this, these were recalled. Do not buy because they were failing to sound. Um, a more descriptive video in the description if you want to check that out. I'll link it below. But other than that, it's got. I think it's basically full electric, but it's. But it says it's got True Sense technology, but I just don't know much about it. But I'll just call it full electric for now. This is a. It looks like the mounting base. And the back of it look very similar to an i9010, but the overall design on the front is very different. So, we'll go ahead and give this a test. And there we go. So, that is the um, True Sense 2050DS10. Alright, and the next one we got is another True Sense, the Kita True Sense 2070 VDSR. And before you say this is a code pick, it just says smoke alarm, not smoke and seal alarm. And it says amber fault. And look at the size of it. That's not code design. So, oh yeah, I almost forgot. It go has one too. Now we'll go ahead and give this a test. And the main reason people got these units for collection is the voice. Give it a listen. Fire. And there is a combination version of this. Unfortunately, I don't have that, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. People love the dying sounds, so here you go. So, so the first one is, I guess I'll consider this crappy lane, but I don't know. But it is the Cancel BLP2. It's just very common. It's not really too exciting. It's just very basic. Morning. Carbon dioxide. There we go. Nothing really to explain about this one. Just takes two double A's, and that's pretty much it. And the next one is basically the... Um, the 
a better version of that. They can still PBB LPM. PPB LPM, yeah. And it's got a peak level button, obviously, for the... Oh! It detected... Wow! It did go. The Cancel PPB LPM detected the highest carbon dioxide level 14 ppm. What was it? 14. Probably due to humidity. Probably, but I think that, but that's interesting. I've never seen that. I think you just hold it down to clear it. I don't know. I'm not gonna really focus on that. Looks like my phone is actually gonna die. So there we go. Give this a test. Warning, carbon monoxide. And there we go. This one takes three double A's, as you can see. Next one is a plug-in version of the LP2. The can still be DP2. It's really no different. Also takes two double A's. It just looks different on the front. And it's um it's supposed to be mounted vertical, but in this case plugged in vertical. So, test it. That is the Can Still Be DP2. Nothing really too special on this one. This next one is super rare, and only two people have at the moment. But that is the Can Still PFI. And boy, is this thing rare! It looks like a th it looks like a freaking thermostat. It is a thermostat. Just kidding, it's not. Yeah, well, that's with the piezo. Well, this thing is loud too. So peak level. Watch, it's gonna say something. Nope. Now it's gonna test. It's really cool looking too. Like like it looks like a thermostat, but it's just not. It looks really really cool. All right, it's about to test. Also, the wire harness is weird. 230 ppm. That actually jumped me a little bit. Look at the wire harness. This thing is still being made today, and look at this harness. It's like an old freaking USI. Yeah, this thing is rare. This thing is like, nobody has found this on Realtor. It's that rare. All right. There's a smoke variant of it, too. Yeah, and that is the, which is more common, actually, the can SMFMI, which I don't have. Nobody has, actually. But, but Zoink was expensive. <laughs> yeah. $400. go as much as $400 on Amazon. <laughs> All right, the next one we got, uh, the last um, kit of carbon oxide alarm I have, is this, the can seal BBLP. It takes three double A's, and the really cool thing about it is it really stands out by its rounded edges. Now we'll go ahead and test it. It says Nighthawk, too, which is cool. Really high pitch. <laughs> Alright, now we're getting to the oldies. This first one is the Kitta Fire Netics 09. 015, not 0905, 0915. Alright, let's see if it goes now. There we go. Yeah, that's the Kit of Firenetics 0915. Next up is hardware only with no battery backup, and that is the 1235. Also, I forgot to point out that this and the 0915 both have um, a diamond grill, which, as you can tell, just look, the grill looks like this. So since this is the uh, since this is hard ride only without battery backup, I'll be getting to this momentarily. So that is the twelve thirty five Kit of Firenetics. All right, so the next one we got is the Kit of Firenetics twelve seventy five, and now I know it's on because it chirped at me because of again dead batteries. So, anyways, this is an ionization unit. It's very similar to twelve thirty five, except it ha actually has battery backup. So. Yeah, it looks cool too. It's like an i one twenty. It's like the old. It's the older version, the i one twenty forty, which I don't have. I will have it soon though. Promise. All right, test it. Here we go. That is the 
Kitta 1275, nothing really explained too much on this. It's an older Kitta, so. Alright, the next alarm we got is the Kitta Fire Netics 1285. This one's rare too. So we'll go ahead and test yeah, this one. This one has a um this. this one has a fluorescent light. We'll go ahead and test it. It takes two incandescent, excuse me. Um and um mine's older than his though, so and test it. And it does light up much more. It's just um uh, dead batteries. Okay, that's the best I could do. Yeah, that's the 1285. From Kitta Firenetics. This is smoke alarm number 40. The Kitta 09. We're not even halfway there yet. The Kitta 0910. It's basically the i9010, except older. It has the um, printed Kittle logo. And test it. It's, um... Oh, the red light was steady that time. Interesting. Yeah, it looks um, very similar. This was actually one that was installed in my house. This is the second alarm I ever uh, acquired in my collection. This next one we got is the Kitta Fire Century 0914. Uh, this was given to me by YouTube user Throg's Neck. Big thank you to him for it. Yeah, he sent me a ton of smoke alarms that day. Yeah. And yes, I do have a Diamond Girl version and does code one pulse, which I'll be getting to in a moment. But this one did fall, so this one's stuck on uh, alarming, so I'm not gonna test it. But it does uh it tests very similar to the I ninety forty. And if you guys wanna see a real if you wanna see a real comparison to the I ninety forty and 0914, there you go. You can see it's got three lines of text, but this one only got, has two, and you can see this one has black piezo, but this one has white. So, nothing really different about this, so Fire Century 0914. But this next one's pretty interesting. It is the Fire Netics 0914. It has a diamond grill, which is really cool. It looks very similar to the Fire Century variant, so we'll go ahead and test it. It does code one yeah, pulse. There we go. Low pitched code one, so that's cool. Yeah, Firenetics 0914. I'm not gonna bother with the tamper switch. So this is the Kitta 0915. It's not a Firenetics or anything. This is a Kitta model, um, and it was made in the 2000s. So we're gonna give a test. Pretty basic, but it's cool to see that it's made in the 2000s. The next one we got is not one, but two of these Kitta 0916s, except this one's Nighthawk branded and this one is Diamond Grill, while this one is uh, has Kitta and Normal Grill. And the difference between the 0915 and 0916 Kitta models is they have a built-in hush button. And I know how much you guys want to see the Diamond Grill one test rather than this one, but... Um, so, um, the unfortunate thing is this one does not do code one pulse, so these two test the exact same way. There you go. Left. Yep, they're the Kitta 0916s. Alright, and the next, and the last one of the 091 series is the Kitta 0918. This is not the Fyronetics version, it is the Kitta version, but it go. Itigo, however, has the Firenetics version, as you can see. For that. You can look at the build date if you want, or back of it. Again, light is very, very dim um, because of the dead battery, but yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we're getting to some of the older ones, which are built, which were made in the um, 19, uh, um, around the 1990s. Now we're on this one, the Firenet Firenetics Lifesaver 0905. It looks really, really cool too, and I have a very similar one, which is a 1225, which I'll get to in a moment. So, the battery is actually inside the alarm. We have to take off the cover and everything and put the battery in. So, we'll go ahead and test it. Does code one. You probably expected that because this is a one that was built, that was made in the 1990s. And the next one is very, very similar. It is the. Firenetics Lifesaver 09, I mean, excuse me, 12, a Firenetics Lifesaver 1225. I really like these units. It was like 
really, like, really. It has a very strange harness for, um, back then. It was, it's, this is not a USI harness or can't say PFI harness either. And look at the way it's sticked in like that. Look at that. But, yeah, this is a 1225. It actually has no battery backup, so you have to test this with AC power. But it's basically, it takes, it tests the exact same way as the 09005, so nothing really different. But it does have a red light for AC power. So now we're going back to the 2000s, or I believe the 2000s. Yeah, this one's made in 2003. This is the Firex CC, also given to me by Throg's Neck. Thank you again. Hmm, takes a 9-volt battery. Sick in there, weird. See, it's Firex. Test it. There you go. It's code 3, by the way. Do you want to do it at a go? <laughs> Alright, the next one we got is a pretty rare one. The Fire X C uh, CEC. This one is a very faulty piezo, which I'll demonstrate. It's what? A very faulty piezo. See, the light is working, but the piezo isn't. It has a very faulty piezo. See, look at that. It's very, very faulty. Hold up. With a screwdriver, that'll it's, fix it. It's very, very faulty. And the weird thing is about this unit, it takes two AA batteries and a 9 volt battery. That is so weird. You wanna do it? <laughs> Alright, the next one we got is actually a uh, like, actually kind of cool, actually, to be honest, for looking basic and very similar to something that was from Crappy Lane. But this one is infamous for having its piezos very faulty. And that is the Firex FADC. The cool thing about this, it has ramp-up tests. And let me demonstrate that for you. It's pretty cool. Um, there's, it takes a 9 volt. And it is from 2007, December 10th. And it is a newer one, actually, because it has the black Fire X labelings on it. But it's basically, it's, but it is an FADC. If you all know what's next. Alright, if you guys saw my last unboxing video, boy, my God. Fire X FADCQ. Yes, I said it. Fire X FADCQ. Yes, I have one of these. So, takes an eye bolt. It has a red yellow light here, green light for AC, and a blue light for carbon monoxide. Piezo, and it has the printed Fire X lettering. So, anyway, let's just get to the point. So, this is the Fire X FADCQ, which both of them were manufactured on Itigo's birthday, 2005, June 3rd. And no, two, no, not his birth date, but his birthday, which is June 3rd. But it was made two years before he was born. How impossible odds. Test it. I love the blue light. Yep, that is the Fire X FEDCQ. It's like... One of the only auto test alarms I have that is made that was made in the two thousands, which is really cool. What's next? The next one we got is my very was my very first heat alarm, and Itico has one of these too, the FireX ADH. All right, we'll insist it. That is the slowest Code Three alarm I ever I have. If y'all don't know, I have four, like, four USI 1204s. Oh yeah, there you go. That's the Fire X ADH. I might sell it. Now too. this one, it's not the ADC, but it is the PAD. And this one is, this one with along with the ADs and ADCs, they're all infamous for having their horn failures like the FADC, but even more infamous. 
All right, we'll go ahead and give the PAD a test. Here we go. Fire. Here we go. Fire X PAD. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. To, I did mention that um, all the Fire X alarms that I mentioned since the CC, they're all ionization, but this one's full electric. Now we're going back to the 1990s, and this is back, this is actually one of my favorite um, smoke alarms in my entire collection. Not just because of the name, because it has a cool look. This is a Fire X rebrand. This is the Jameson. The model of it is, uh, this is the Code 1 Jameson CD2. And it has a very cool look to it. It's, um, I think this is made in the 1990s. If I'm correct, it is. But yeah, it is a code one of the video. So anyway, we'll go ahead and test it. Yep, that's code one. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that's the Jameson model CD2. All right, the next one we got is another. Ja it's another code one Jameson. I think if I'm correct, this is a Jameson model A. So, it doesn't say because the sticker has been removed and the front of it was absolutely sticky. Look at this. You could see it. Oh yeah, both Jamesons were also given to me by Throg's Neck. Thank you again. Test it. Yeah, I forget to mention that both C, C and the C, E, C also were given to me by Throg's Neck. So yeah. So we are going to start with this one. This is the first alert SA720. It actually does not work no more. I don't know what happened to it, but it just broke. But it's full electric, takes 9 volt, and it's battery operated. And yes, they did make a hardwired version of it, and that is right here. The 7020B. So, this is the first alert 7020B. It is, um, this is the hardwired version. Also takes nine volt. It's also full electric, and it has two lights instead of one. Four one being AC power. Test button. All right, test it. That was weird. Must be because of a dead battery. Well, yeah, there you go. First alert, seventy twenty B. Go. All right. The next one we got is the first alert. 9120B. Um, Indigo already has one. Like I said, I had two of them, but one of them's going to Indigo, although not kind of, not including the fact that he does already have one. But this is Jacob Flanagan's favorite smoke alarm, so you're gonna like this part. So has latch feature and everything like that. Test it. Was it his favorite unit, the 1275? That's his favorite kiddo unit. This is his favorite unit oh. all the time. So yeah, that's the first one, 9120B. Alright, the next one we got is the First Lure SC9120B. This is a, um, a combination version of the 9120B. Also has latch features and stuff like that. Oh yeah, both 9120B and SC9120B take 9 volt batteries and both are ionization. Test the SC9120B. I think one. And there we go. That's the first floor SC9120B. Alright, the next alarms we have are... Please manual. Please manual territory. Please, please see manual. Please see Please man. I had to. Oh yeah, this one's not please see manual. Let's just stay let's just stay bridge unit for these units. But yeah. Yeah, I have two two of I have a bunch of these. So yeah. This one right here is an SA520, it's a P this one does not have a voice, but it is a bridge unit. This is a very this is actually a rare CO five eleven. This is actually a second generation model while the rest of these are third gen. But they never made a third gen CO511, which is weird. But they did make... T I do have two of these SA511s. I just stuck this sticker on because I was bored. 
is to make them look different. And this is a STO 500, which is a combination version. So I'm sure you all know how this goes. So this. here we go. This is going to be loud. Look. Hold up. Here we go. Okay, this is going to be loud, so cover your ears. PPM, please see manual. I swear the first thing I heard was warning bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Those are the the whole oh, entire first part. Again. There you go. Yep, so I those are the first four please see so. manuals we like to call them, but in this case, CO511, SA511, SCO500, and SA520, which it technically does not count as a police. Alright. The next alarm we have is, oh my god, it's so skinny, isn't it? We have the first gen P1210. This was given to me by my uncle. Thank you yeah, to him for that. Alright, so this is the first gen P1210. The um, second generation uh, is this one. So these are the two P1210s. So we'll test some. Um, yeah, so this right here is the first sort P12. This right here is the first sort P1210. This is a um, first gen model. Go ahead and test it. It's a full electric uh, slimline unit. So yeah, it's cool because it's like slim. Some people don't like them, but now nah, I think they're good. And now we have the second generation model. This is the second gen P1210. And we'll go ahead and test this one. There we go. They're both, um, they both look the same on the back, but they're both different on the front. Here you go. Different test button, different light, different piezo, and has a little ridge. There you go. Next one we got is the first alert P1210. Please see manual. Welcome to the smoke light. Oh, here it comes again. Just like from the. Yes, um, it's the first sort of P1210E, and, oh, what's this? Is that a camera? Uh-oh, I'm being recorded. Well, I can definitely show you that is not a camera. That is an escape light. See? It's an escape light alarm. It's basically, like, hidden. It looks like a camera. So it looks very similar to second gen P1210. It is part of the second gen series. So, there you go. All right. The next one we got is the last of the P1210 series. Please see manual. Yes, we got another please see manual. Here we go. Yes, got female manual. Yes, it's got female. It's not wireless. It's not wireless, which sucks. Warning. Evacuate. Carbon monoxide in child's bedroom. Evacuate. Highest carbon monoxide level was 0 ppm. There we go. That is the female manual. All the first slim line units, they're all photoelectric. And, uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, PC. The model of this is the PC-1210V. So there you go. Alright, this is the last of the Please See Manual series. The one link, or not, this is, this is not a one link, it's uh, first sort SC7010 LBLV. It's a cheaper version of the um, one link models. Test it. They were? Testing. Yeah, they were actually. It's really interesting. 
At least I think they were. It's got that very low horn. Morning. Evacuate. Smoke in living room. Evacuate. I just said on living room? That's weird. Oh, probably because of one of those. Now, like the FADCQ, it's going to light up blue for carbon dioxide when it speaks. There it is. That's cool. Loading. There it is. So that is the last of the talking smoke alarms for the entire video, except for one that's coming up. Or actually three, I should say. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that. So, that is the SC710 LBLV from First Alert. Next one we got is... Man, get this drink out of my face! Hey, excuse me, uh, you gave me my Sprite and a coffee... SHUT THE F*** UP! Yep. The shut the F up memes. Oh, I should have mentioned the Allen 2010 SCO earlier was actually my pleasure, and the FADC or I for 618AC or, you know, should be, oh my god, man. But, yeah, this is the 3120B. It's the only, these, the, this, along with the Piano 9000, are the only two dual sensor alarms I have in my collection. So, we'll go ahead and give this one a test. This one's auto test. I'm all pissed first order. Oh, and yes, this does take, this takes double A's, not nine volts. And it's octagonal shaped. And it is hardwired. So yeah, there you go, 3120B by first alert. Next one we got is the SA304. I don't have the SA303, but I do have the 304. Um, you don't have the 302 or 301 either. Yeah, I don't, but I do have the 304. 304, let's test it. There we go. Has a skate blade, it's ionization, and they're pretty cheap. So I guess I'll consider a crappy lane. And yes, guys, we'll be in crappy lane in a moment after we get through all the vintage first sorts, which will be here momentarily. So yeah, that's the SA304. Alright, these next two are, um, the... These next two can fit inside my hands. They are the world's smallest smoke alarms, and they are made by First Lord. These are the First Lord Atoms, and this one is a rare one right here. This is a P1000 in silver, and this is a lithium-sealed model P1010 in white. And they only made these in white, but this one they made in various colors until those were discontinued. But yeah, test it. Or I test one of them. They're made under the wood. Beep. 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 <laughs> I like the sound it makes. Beep. Beep. I think. Beep. Yeah, they sound cool like that, in my opinion. Yeah, this one sounds the At same. At this point, if I hear it, I copy it. Beep! Beep! Oh, these next two are very similar. This one right here is a CO600. It has no battery backup. So, I think I know how to show... I don't think I know how to make a test for you guys. Plug it into an extension. And came prepared. So yeah, there you go. That's the CO600. It has no battery backup, but it does test. And uh, here's a very similar one. This is a CO606. Um, not a 605. 606. Has a um, battery drawer here. It takes a 9 volt. And it's actually expired, so it does not work. So it doesn't test. So this is also given to me by Throg's Neck basically garbage, but thank you anyway. 
Alright, you ready for something? Because we're starting off strong with the stuff that was built in the 1990s. Here's the first one. First floor, SA90LT. So, it's ionization. Obviously, these were discontinued. See, because they were made in the 1990s. They were long gone. So, we'll go and test it. It's got the um, gold button, unlike the SA67D. It, it wasn't even centered. But the SA67D has a clear button and an LED in it, but this one has a gold button. So that's cool. Nope. Cover flew open. There you go. That's an NDLT. Okay, so this next one, don't expect this one to light up because I have dead batteries, but the next one is the SA150LT. The escape light does work. This was given to... Oh, Catwoman left. Um... So, um, uh, this is the SC150LT. To to... Oh, there we go. I got it to light up. Well, there you go. This also has a gold button and it has an escape light. So, yeah, there we go. SC150. First floor SC150LT. Alright, this next one, which is also something that's gonna be in Indigo's collection soon, the FCD3N from First Alert. It does a normal carbon oxide um, coating, so we'll test it. Yeah, you're getting one soon. So there you go. That's, um, it was made in 2005, I think. That was close. 2004, excuse me. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the FCD 3N. This was actually not made until uh, 1990s, but the 2000s, I guess. So yeah, that's the FCD 3N. The next one we got is the, um, BRK 83R with a Family Guard FG888 base. Which basically means it does code 3, not code 1. Test it. Here we go. It's basically a Family Guard triple eight, except it doesn't, except it has a different cover. That's really it. So, yeah. So, I believe this was made in the 1990s, if not the 2000s. Probably the 2000s because it's a newer model, but yeah. BRK 83R. The next one we got is the first door, oh actually BRK, I think, FACO, and the cool thing about this, it actually takes something called a sensor pack, which makes that so unfortunately it does not work no more unless you put a 9 volt, but it's very, very finicky. But it does work. So this was also given to me by my uncle along with the SA90LT. The SA150LT was given to me by Jack. So, yeah. That's the, um, um, FACO. Nothing really, not much here. Yeah. Nothing much there. Alright, the next ones we got are not one, but two, um, BRK 86 RACs. These are really cool, to be honest. Like, they're actually, these are, these are probably some of the more classic, um, Vintage smoke lumps you can see, find, or get, or stuff like that. This one is actually a rare one. It does code 3. This one's a more common version. It does code 1. But we'll test the code 1 version first. I blame dead batteries. I didn't even fall asleep. Why the what? Why did the off was online? I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's um sensors. Yeah, sensors been activated. But yeah, take the battery out of that. And here is the third generation model. The other one, the one I just tested, it was the second generation model. This is the third gen one. There you go, these do code 3. So those are the 86 RACs. <sighs> Here we go. Next one is the BRK 1839N. <laughs> Why do I... Uh, uh. <laughs> and as 
Some of us may know it's Itigo's worst nightmare inside joke. Get it out of here. Fine. But before I even get it out of here, we're just I'm just gonna explain it. It has the pushing terminals, as you can tell. Good it, kid, uh, beep. It says continuous. Oh, um, I heard. So it does continuous um, piezo. So it has the test button in the middle. The grills are a lot larger. Um, looks very similar to an e source. He has no battery backup, pushing terminals, ionization. So this one's really cool to have, to be honest. Oh, there goes the E6 RAC. He's dying. Well, there you go. So this is the older version of the 86 RACs. After the first gen, then it was the 1839N. After the before the 1839N was the 1839I, and before that, the 1839 ACI. Yep, and this is the 1839 ACI right here. And other than the first store low frequency alarms, this is the first alarm I have that's not a piezo. It has the mechanical horn. It kind of sounds like, eh, kind of like. Unfortunately, this is another one I can't test because it also has push in. So it has a different bass though. Uh, as you can tell, it looks very similar to the A6 RAC. The grills are the same, but the test bunch is in a different placement. And again, it has the mechanical buzzer. And this is um, really cool. It's rarer than the 1839N, which the 1839 is rarer than the A6RC, and yeah, so on and so on. And the one after this was the 1769 ACI, but I don't have that, so. Yeah, there's the, yeah, 1839 ACI. Alright, the next one we got is one of the rare alarms that I have in my collection, my entire collection, and that is this right here. This is a Montgomery Ward 84-7, I believe. It's a BRK79RE brand. And look at the, I like the front of it. It's like, it has a cool little look to it. Um, see Montgomery Ward. I believe the model is 84.7. Yep, I was right, 84.7. And we'll go ahead and give this a test. It tests really cool, too. Yeah, that's cool. I like these units. They're really cool. I'm lucky, I'm lucky to have one. These are very hard to get. It also came with the box, so it came brand new. So, yeah. Montgomery Ward 84.7. Well, going back to Crappy Lane. I have 43 minutes left. This is the Family Guard FG2 dollar. FG200, excuse me. But we like to call them FG2 dollars. Because you know why? They cost $2. <laughs> well, yeah. This is a Family Guard model. It's uh, about the same size as the I-9040. If you want, to maybe you want a little comparison. Test it. Has a very weird test button. Looks like a break. Yeah, there you go. Nothing really too exciting here. It's actually, they actually still make these if I'm not mistaken. Well, actually, they made it like around the 2017. Because that's when this was manufactured. Look at this. Wow, I think. Yeah, 2017, look at that. It's fairly new for something that looks to be old. I swear, this is the last time we'll be here. And it is the Citerwell GS528A, and boy are these things cheap. Good lord. Like, yeah. Has that cheap connector. When was it made? My god, that thing's alive. 2019, November 15th. That's about the closest I have to my birthday. Yep. Huh? Citadel GS528A. Alright. Goodbye, crap lane. Next one is actually a system detector that has a piezo. It is the Simply Safe S. What's the model? I forgot, actually. SSSD1. Um, it takes the CR123 battery, and I don't have that battery at the moment, so I can't test it. I don't think this is a 2 gig model, but I'm not sure. But it has that very interesting test button, but yeah. Yeah, not, very, not many people recommend Simply Safe as they, uh, their system detectors and system security systems and stuff like that. Like, ask my friend Thomas. Yeah, it's full electric, by the way. The next one we got is a 
Signal 1 Safety Vocal Smoke Alarm. Let's hear what it has to say. And boy, that thing is high-pitched. Yes, you can create your own voice evacuation messages now. Except for the fact that those are long gone now. Look at that. 2006. That's ridiculous. I wish they still made these. Yeah, it's made by Signal1. You can your own messages, including this one. I think... I don't know who made them first. It's... I don't know exactly who made these first, but either Signal 1 or Kid Smart, but I'm not sure who made these first. But, yeah. And if you hold this down for long enough, it will actually go on loop. So that's pretty cool. Like. I want to say Signal 1 made it first. See, if you hold it down like that, it has to do its, um. See, now it will do its, um. Whatever you're recording. See, now it's going to loop again. And I think you all understand the, uh, and I think you understand it now. It just loops, loops and goes on forever until you tell it to stop. You just have to press it again to tell it to stop. I think that's a unique feature to have. So, yeah. The model of this is 10014 VSA. If you hold this button down, you create your own message. So, let's try, let's do an example. Hola, hola, como estas? Oh! Hola, hola, como estas? Oh! <laughs> and there it's now safe. Erika, <laughs> you want to hear that? Oh my god. I didn't hear it. Okay, listen. Listen. Hola, hola, como estas? Oh! <laughs> See, this is what, that's what's nice about this alarm. You can just mess around. This is a really good alarm to have for a collection, if you ask me, because you can mess around with it as much as you like. <laughs> okay, I just made myself laugh from doing that. <laughs> okay. All right. The next one we got is the Xsense SDO3, I think. Um, yeah, this is another one of those. Yeah, we're still in the miscellaneous stuff right now. Tests a lot like a Copic, so here we go. If you ask me, Xsense is underrated, to be honest. Even if all their alarms are battery operated, they're pretty underrated, to be honest. I think they're starting to get popular, but I'm not sure. But, like, really, most people have Kita stuff. See, it tests a lot like a Copic, just without a voice. And this is a 10 year lithium sealed photoelectric model. So, yeah, Xsense. These are pretty cool. Just had to get one. Alright, next one, which I can't test unfortunately, is actually a water alarm. It's made by the company Watchdog. The model is right on the front, which is nice. BWD Focus! BWD HWA water alarm. Um, basically how you test this, I don't know how to put batteries in this, but, oh, there we go. But, um, you have to put, like, a wet napkin onto these little metal things, and it will sound the alarm, and it has a continuous piezo, so, it's a little bit of a grayish color, which is cool, so, yeah. We're planning on put this in my basement at some point, but right now it's in my collection. These next three are system detectors. The first two are made by the company ESL, and here they are. This is the older and this is the newer. So this one right here is the ESL 445 CT smoke and heat detector, and this is an ESL 449 CT smoke and heat detector. And this one uh, came out of my uncle's and um, has an interesting um, like little thing here. Like that's the heat sensor. This is also a heat sensor. 
And this is the little things for the lights. That's what it looks like inside that one. And this one has an abysmally large sensor in it. It's a, uh, I believe these are both electric, but I'm not sure. This one I know for matter of fact is. Yeah, there's the back. Here's the back of this one. Oh yeah, that's what um, ESL stands for, Electro Signals Lab. Damn! Sorry, I had to. Okay. And yeah, these are just system detectors, so they're not capable of testing. Um, and here's another system detector. Here's a system sensor. Uh, what was it? I forgot actually. How did I forget the model? I32WB. This is an system sensor I32WB system detector. This is a very, very common. It's set up for my fire alarm system. So, yeah, it's a system detector. It's from what you expect. Now we're getting to the last. These are the. Um, this is the second to last segment of this whole video. And that is the two Nest Protects I have. Yes, I have two of them now. So, yeah. It's really cool to have. Ready in the bedroom. Press yes, to test. Yes, again, dead batteries. This is only a test. The alarm will sound. Yes. It's going to be loud. The test starts in I five seconds. I think every single Press one of us have heard of these units. The new voice stinks, though. Testing smoke. If I'm correct, these are wirelessly interconnected, too. Testing carbon monoxide. If I have them set up, I hope I do. I'll be quiet for this other one. Just a moment. Testing. Finishing up. Now it is going to give an error because, um... The test is finished. Um, let's see. I forgot. One of them is low batteries. Heads up. Nest Protect needs your attention in the bathroom and in the bedroom. Press to hear more. Content unavailable. The batteries are low in the bathroom. Replace the batteries soon. Nest Protect can't sound the alarm in the bedroom. I don't understand what that is, but yeah, the test is done. But yeah, those are the two Nest Protects I have. Um, a lot of us should know what these are. Numerous videos have been seen on these units. So yeah, these are um, two second gen Nest Protects. Yep. But the hour and a half is probably what's going to conclude too. Because this is the very last alarm out of 98 in my whole collection and that is the one link safe and sound yes I had to put this one last for a reason this is a very high-tech smoke alarm it's not only it's smoking carbon dioxide photoelectric and I guess I could consider it a 10 year look at how nice this looks look at how clean it looks like it has this nice little silver thing nice um nice looking front that is the, it's actually still not connected to the app. I never got the chance to do that. But we're going to go ahead and power it on. And let's see what it sounds like. Alright, here we go. Let's power this. There we go. Alright. Now let's hold the test button. And it is going to be wirelessly interconnecting to the 1225 and the P4010. So here we go. This is only a test. The alarm will sound and for your protection is very loud. The test will start in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. One. Fire. Evacuate. There's fire. Evacuate.
Evacuate. Evacuate. There's carbon monoxide. In the downstairs. Highest carbon monoxide level was zero ppm. And there we go. Now it's done. This means it's done. Oh, it's now this the white light means it's AC power. So there you go. That is the one link safe and sound. Oh my goodness, what a video this has been. If you made it to the end of this video, give yourself a pat on the back cuz you just probably you probably just watched the longest smoke alarm collection update on YouTube by far. I think 98 alarms Probably over 40 minutes edited the video. Um, what? I counted an hour and a half, maybe more. Don't expect another collection update in months. If there's going to be another collection update, it's going to be in a year. So, don't expect it very soon. So, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm going to be doing a collection update on my birthday. If I do, I'll decide. If not, then I'll, I'll probably... If I do, then I'll probably just live stream it rather than just, like, going individually and editing a whole video. I'll probably just do a live stream of going through every single one I have. So, goodness. This has been a blast. I'm surprised out of all these alarms I have, including all the miscellaneous stuff over there... I don't have a single USI in my collection yet. This has been a video. Hope y'all enjoy. Let me just finish this up before I run out of storage. So, anyways. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. If it did, hit the like. Go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one. And do you want to say bye to go? Bye bye, everybody. See y'all in the next one. Do you mind if I head out for about, about 10 minutes to... Honestly, I feel like you've been drinking. Pussy manual! <laughs>